Why hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Trader Steve's Journey Across Gillinor to collect as many rare items as he can get his grubby little mitts on. Trader Steve is starting his journey in the Grand Exchange chunk, but for every new rare item he can add to his collection that's worth more than 1 mil, he can unlock a new adjacent chunk, with Trader Steve's ultimate goal, obtaining a quest cape. Now in the last episode, Trader Steve pushed further west into Kandarin, unlocking more of the Ardoin region while focusing on improving the profitability of our runecrafting. So currently, here is what the map looks like. So far, we've unlocked 22 new chunks, thanks to us earning enough money to obtain, well, 22 unique rare items. The bottom of the list is slowly but surely getting filled out, which means items are starting to get much more expensive. Now in the last episode, thanks to a ton of runecrafting, Trader Steve was left off with one of our biggest cash stacks to date, 5 mil. Now because we actually have so much money right now, I think this is probably a good opportunity to buy a few items that are more expensive, or expensive for me now, that are going to be incredibly useful because we don't normally have this much money. So we're going to start off by buying the Toxic Trident. I almost have the magic level to use this right now, and while we don't really have a boss unlocked that is worth using the trident on, we will soon. It's just such a staple item, so strong in the mid game, so I think it's worth picking it up. Right now it goes for 3.6 mil, making it I think our most expensive purchase yet. Now in episode number 4, we kind of got stuck just trying to complete Plague City. I really just wanted to unlock the Ardoin Teleport, but to do it we've already invested I think to 4 different chunks, which is way more expensive than I thought. The reality though is we need to complete quests at some point. The end goal is a quest cape, but because we've already invested so much into this quest already, let's just go ahead and finish this up. God, still mad about that. Just a tiny little section of the city that was not in the chunk for whatever reason. But now we can continue on at least. Okay, so there we go. After but a 10 mil cash investment to unlock four different chunks, we have completed Plague City, which gives us a bit of mining experience, but most importantly, the Ardoin teleport scroll. So no longer do we have to take the boat over here every single time, which will help give us access to the west side of the map. Now as far as I'm aware, I'm pretty sure we have all of the access points now for Biohazard, so we might as well just go ahead and complete that now as well. Oh bother, I uh, miscalculated again somehow. Goddamn NPC is just a little too far away again. Man, I wish there was a way to just bait them out here a little bit, but I don't think there's much we can do about that. We're just gonna have to unlock this location. We're in so deep now, we just have to do it. Yes, I know. Gambler's fallacy, it's okay. We're gonna do it anyway. Now we actually had a fair bit of money left over from the Toxic Trident purchase. I've decided once again I want to buy another item that is a bit more expensive but very helpful. Now we couldn't quite afford it so we had to go craft another 10,000 cosmic runes which uh, takes about an hour, hour and a half. You really get a lot of runes nowadays. So we have 1.5 mil in the bank and 1 mil-ish worth of cosmic runes. And what we're going to do is invest this into an Amulet of Fury. Regardless of what kind of combat training I'm going to do in the near future, the Fury is going to be the best option for a while. And we're just able to pick one up for 2.5 mil. We're completely broke now, but we have managed to obtain two really useful items. So this is definitely looking like it's competing for one of the most useless chunks I've unlocked so far. The East Rock Mine Chunk, eh, it's just it's not much in it. But there are quest locations here, so it's not entirely dead. Such as, of course, the Biohazard quest. Alright, so there we go. Biohazard is complete, giving us access to West Ardoin and a few quest points as well. So with that out of the way, I think it's time to talk about what our next kind of mid-game goal is going to be. Now the map of Gillinor is very big. As I noted at the beginning, there is well over 450 chunks. And because it's so large, I think it's going to be important to think about where we're going to be going very carefully. Because it's going to take a long time to get to any of the extremities of the map. Sure, the central sections are all going to be probably unlocked at some point. Like Kandarin, Mistelin, 
and Asgarnia, those sections will probably get filled out naturally by doing the early and mid game quests, but what about the further reaches? Now last time I highlighted three potential routes I was considering. That of Taranwan in the Elven Lands, one that would go into the desert, and one that would go into Mauritania. Now I'd like to say that the Biohazard quest was a bait and switch that I thought of on day one, but to be honest I just changed my mind on where I wanted to go. I'm not going to be going to the Elven Lands, mainly because it's going to take a long time to unlock anything of value. Zalra is pretty much the first major unlock we can get in there, for money making at least, and that's going to require 15 to 20 more chunks on its own, with very little of value unlocked along the way. Prifdinus is going to be an amazing late game city for making money in, but there's not enough in between. The desert route also suffers from a similar problem. Sure, it does have the Tombs of Masket, which right now is one of the best money makers in the game, accessible at lower levels, but there's just not much in between and not enough to propel us there. That could be like 30 plus chunks just to unlock Tombs of Masket, maybe even more. So that finally leaves the Mauritania route. Mauritania has a ton to offer as far as money making goes, and the more I thought about it, the more this really seems like the clear choice. Not only does it have some of the best endgame money makers with its own raid, of course, the Theater of Blood, an endgame city in Darkmire with some of the best money makers in the game. On top of those, it also has a larger gradient of things in between. It has quite a few mid game money makers, such as Barrows. I have tons of ideas for the city of Morton. And just looking at it, I think there's an interesting moneymaker that's unlocked every like three or four chunks, which I think will make for a lot more of an interesting mid-game journey. Now, of course, Mortani is not the only goal, but that's definitely going to be the focus for the near future. All right, so it's time for a bit of a rebuild. Uh, we spent all our money on the Amulet of Fury. We only have 26k left, so we need to sell off a well. We'll sell off some of these glories we had in our bank. Now that we have the Toxic Trident, I'm kind of keen to try to get to 78 magic pretty soon just so we can use it if we need to. And charging air orbs is honestly I think the best magic training method I have, at least one that still makes money. So we're going to start our rebuild with that. So I only had the resources to charge 160 air orbs, not much, but we sold them off for 200k and we're going to invest that into more magic training. Okay, that took about an hour, but we're done with another 500 air orbs, bringing us about halfway to 77 magic as well, and also 600k cash back. Hey, there we go, 77 magic. Only one more level now until we can equip the Toxic Trident. We already have it. I mean, we don't have the money to use it really, but we do have it, and we'll be able to equip it with one more level. So there is 1100 air orbs done, so that has brought us 1.3 mil cash, which should be enough to buy another item. Now we bought a couple expensive items recently, so now I think we're going to look closer to the bottom of the list. Now an item that was added in somewhat recently is the Ring of Elements. This item is really interesting, mainly people are using it for runecrafting, but I have a couple ideas on how I could use it for some other money makers that honestly I've never seen anyone do before, or at least not this version of it. So we went ahead and bought the Ring of the Elements for 1 mil. So now that we are committing to the Mauritania route, well, what exactly is the route? Now to get into the Mauritania region, we have to complete a quest, Priest in Peril. Now that's located over in this chunk, and that's fine because we would actually have to go this way anyway. We have to walk over to Mauritania somehow. There's no legitimate transport method for me to get there, so we're gonna have to get there the old fashioned way, one chunk at a time, walking. So the first step is going to be unlocking the Lumbridge Sawmill. Now I'm actually quite excited about this chunk because there's a couple of money makers I want to try out. The first one I want to try is we actually have access to the Earth Altar now which means we could theoretically craft mud runes. 
While mud runes aren't nearly as valuable as some of the higher tier runes like nature or cosmic, there is one benefit to this altar. I can teleport directly there with the ring of the elements. That's what's so good about it. So we'd be able to instantly teleport to the altar pretty much, craft some mud runes, and then teleport back to Edgeville or something. You can craft way more runes this way than through the abyss. Now mud runes are a combination of earth and water runes, and the way it works is you have to bring a water talisman to the earth altar or vice versa. So they're kind of awkward to make for me at least because I don't have access to any of the better methods, but essentially what we're going to do is use the ring of elements to teleport directly to the earth altar. We're going to enter the altar and then we're going to use our water runes on the altar to craft mud runes and then we're going to empty our rune pouch, do that one more time. From there we'll teleport back to the grand exchange for example and bank. I'm so dumb. How did I immediately forget this? <sighs> okay, so our pouch degraded. I'm dumb, yep. Oh, uh, this isn't gonna work, I don't think. That's sad. Unfortunately, until we get the lunar spell that allows us to repair these remotely, it's just not gonna work. We're gonna have to run way out of our way to do this. I mean, we could, it would just be kind of a pain. Don't worry guys, we have a backup plan. That was only method one of two. The next idea I had was actually to simply create planks at the sawmill. Now historically you'd have to use like the hot air balloon to get here or simply run from Varrock. But if you notice the earth altar is like right beside the sawmill which means we can pretty much teleport directly there and back to a bank so we should be able to make a ton of planks per hour. Which means this should be actually a pretty profitable method. The only issue is we're not getting any experience from this, but to switch it up a little bit from room crafting, which uh, a little tired of, we're going to try making some oak planks. Okay, so just to show you how quickly we can get to the lumber yard with this new method. So we've teleported to the earth altar and look, it's right there. It's like five seconds away. We're going to run up here with our cash stack and some oak logs, turn our entire inventory into oak planks, and then we're going to teleport back to Edgeville and just repeat that like a million times. Okay, so we quickly ran out of logs and money as well. We were able to make 600 oak planks in, oh, I don't even know, five minutes. Super, super quick. And after selling them, our cash tag is now up to 330k. And we're gonna invest that right back into oak logs. So I've been kind of running some numbers here and I think the money per hour you can make using the ring of the elements for plank making is about 700k per hour. Quite good considering there's no requirements for this at all. So we've been kind of slowly building up a cash stack. There is 1,000 oak planks we're going to sell for about half a mil. And we're going to of course just invest that right back into oak planks. Alright, so there is 2,000 oak planks, which we can now sell for about 900k, bringing our cash stack up to 1.1 mil, which is actually just enough money to buy another pretty useful item. We're going to use pretty much all that money to buy the Obsidian Plate Body, an incredibly strong piece of melee gear that gives actually a strength bonus. We can't wear it yet, unfortunately, but a very good item. Okay, so with that, we were able to unlock Sylvaria, a very underexplored chunk, at least for me. I don't really know much about what this place offers. I mean, it has Reg and Bone Man, but who in the hell wants to do that quest? So most people don't ever come here. Now, one thing I noticed right away is actually this mine up here allows you to mine limestone, which is interesting. I might actually try that out. I'm not sure how valuable limestone is, but eh, it's new content I've never tried before. I'm kind of curious. Okay, so once again, the Ring of the Elements is really coming in handy. We can teleport to the Earth Altar and then just run like 10 or 15 seconds to the east and we'll get to the mine. This is really odd. I don't think I've mined anything like this before. You can mine it, I think, three times before it actually breaks, which means you can mine this pretty quickly, but uh, I'm not really sure if it's worth doing. All right, so there's a full inventory, uh, apparently only worth 6K. So questionable, not really sure if that's gonna be worth it, but hey, let's just go mine a bit anyway. We have no money left overs, uh, so we're gonna need some items to rebuild our cash stack anyway. Okay, so with that final inventory, we have successfully mined 500 
limestone. That took me uh, about an hour. So we're going to be a bit cheeky here because I noticed it sometimes spikes up a lot. So we're going to actually just, we're going to put it in here for 2000 and see what happens. That will uh, make my day if that offer actually goes through. So our account is progressing nicely, but something that's still pretty underleveled are our combat stats. Now, I don't really have access to any good combat money makers, but something I thought of recently is actually Moss Giants. Moss Giants are a pretty good training method for me right now, but one thing that's really interesting is they drop the Mossy Key. We can use this to take on Bria Fida, and Bria Fida has a 1 in 100 roughly, chance of dropping the Bria Fida's Essence, which is actually worth 5 mil. If we're able to get lucky with that, that would help us unlock a couple of chunks and also train up our account at the same time. It's not super likely to happen, but it is definitely possible, so we're going to give it a try. Alright, so we've been exterminating these Moss Giants for a couple of days now. We got all the way up to 60 attack, and from the entire grind, we ended up with a fair number of seeds. In total, we ended up with like 8 Renar seeds, 2 Snapdragons. That's decently valuable, but the thing I'm most excited about are actually the 7 Mossy Keys, which means we'll be able to take on Briafita 7 times. Now, to kill Briafita, there's quite a few different ways you can go about it. It's a pretty weak boss, so any combat style is kind of valid. Now, because we're members and we have a pretty high magic level, I'm actually just going to use the Trident of the Seas. By no means is this the most efficient way to kill Briafita, but I think it's going to work fine for us. So we're bringing a full inventory of food, magic gear, and all seven of the keys, and hopefully we can do this all in one trip. So we have seven attempts at getting the Briafita's Essence, if we get lucky anyway. Okay, I think that's the final kill here for some Cosmic Runes. Okay, that's the worst drop of all. So although we didn't get the six mole drop, that's uh, not to be expected. And although we didn't get the Essence, we did end up with an inventory of Alkables, which would be worth a fair bit as well. After selling those, we ended up with about 200k, plus around 300k from the initial grind. So, you know, half a mil just from killing Moss Giants is pretty damn good. Okay, so we ended up giving up on our Limestone offer. Fair enough, 2000 was really greedy. I didn't think that was really going to happen. We dropped them to 400 each, which they have started selling for. And after claiming a bit of money, that has brought our cash stack up to about half a mil. So we used that money to purchase another 20,000 pure essence, some stamina potions, and some glories. And you know, you know where I'm going. We're back at it. We spent a lot of time getting our runecrafting level up and getting this outfit. So we have to, of course, do a fair bit of runecrafting and make it all worth it. So let's craft some cosmic runes. It's finally happened. There we go. 76 runecrafting has been achieved, that took a while. Abyss runecrafting is bloody slow, I mean we're getting like 15k runecrafting XP per hour, not very quick. I mean runecrafting historically is not quick, but still, that's pretty damn slow. To get this level we actually ended up crafting 38,000 cosmic runes, I've been at it all day pretty much. But cosmics are going for 90 each right now, which means that should still be about 3.5 mil in runes. So unfortunately, it is still our best moneymaker. No doubt about that. Okay, so here is our gear right now. And one thing you might notice is there's one main item missing, and that is a ring slot. Now conventionally, I would go ahead and buy, you know, the berserker ring and imbue it. I don't really have an easy way to imbue the ring right now, and because of that, the Brimstone Ring is actually a much stronger option. The Brimstone Ring is just overall better than an unimbued Berserker Ring or an unimbued Archer Ring, so it's going to be the best option for the foreseeable future. I'm not really sure when I'll be able to get a ring imbue, but let's go ahead and buy the Brimstone Ring for now. It's quite pricey, 3.3 mil for it, but it's going to pay off. So with that item added to the list, we can now unlock the Paterdomus Temple, which is the gateway to Mauritania. I'm excited, we're just at the precipice of our new region. And with that chunk unlocked, we should also pretty easily be able to do Priest in Peril. 
So luckily for the Priest and Peril quest, we have all the chunks unlocked, we just need the Varrock Palace and the route to Paterdomus, which we have fully unlocked at this point. I feel like this is the first time I've ever done this quest where I've had access to all of the room pouches. This might be the first account I've ever had 75 plus room crafting on before unlocking more Tanya. Are you serious? I still didn't have enough room for all of the essence? That's a bit... what was the point? Okay, there we go. That is Priest and Peril done with, which means we now have access to more Tanya. That is exciting. Let's take our first step into our new region and our new chunk. Having a look at it, there is a farming patch, although it's for mushrooms. I don't know if that's ever going to be useful. And it has unlocked the southern access point to Mortania, heading down to Morton and stuff like that, but not too much in this chunk overall. So like I mentioned, during that grind we did hit 60 attack, and I've been trying to figure out which weapon I actually want to use. I considered for a little while buying the Vigorous Chain Mace, but while I considered, the value of that item doubled, so it's like a 16 mil item, and sure, while I do need to buy it eventually, it's just too costly to buy now, so one item I totally forgot about, the Dragon Sword. We can just buy that straight up, no quest requirement, pretty much as good as the Dragon Scimitar, and that will be fine, more than fine, until we get the Abyssal Whip. So now that Mauritania has been unlocked, there's one thing I've been wanting to talk about for a little while now, and that is passive income. Oh man, sounds like I'm about to sell my financial course right now, but no, I'm talking about farm runs. Using the farming skill to farm herbs is one of the best ways to make money in the early to mid game. And it's something I really want to start getting set up. Now right now my farming level is level 1, so it's quite, it's as low as it gets. But I want to change that now and start working towards a starter farm run. Now normally, right off the bat, you have access to four different herb patches. There's one in Hosidius, one in Falador, Draenor area, there's one in Ardoin, and there's one in Mortania. The issue is, I don't have access to most of those chunks, and many of the herb patches are really far away, so we're not going to unlock those for a long time. Currently, actually, I only have access to one herb patch, which is not ideal, but honestly, even a single herb patch farmed a few times a day is still going to bring in quite a bit of passive money, so I kind of want to get that set up now. Now because we're level 1 farming, it's really slow to begin with, and there's a couple ways I could train the skill, but by far the easiest one right now is actually just to purchase these bagged plants right off the Grand Exchange. We're going to need to make about 100k investment into about 50 bagged plant ones, and what we're going to do with those is we can plant them in our player owned house for instant farming experience and some construction actually as well. And we're going to use these to get to 15 farming right away without having to wait for anything to grow, anything like that. And while it's a bit pricey, I think it's definitely going to be worth it. Okay, so what we do is we teleport to our house with an inventory of bagged plants and some watering cans. We craft the plant, gain some farming experience, ruthlessly destroy it, and then plant it again. It's a bit of a psychotic cycle, but whatever. We're just going to spam through some early levels here. So that final bag plant, that is going to bring us actually to 12 farming and 12 construction. So why level 12 farming? Well at level 12 we're able to eat a garden pie, and the garden pie will boost us to 15 farming, and that's really the level that matters. So thanks to the garden pie we can get a plus 3 boost to be able to plant our very first tree, the oak tree. Luckily we actually already have two tree patches unlocked, one in Varrock and one in Lumbridge, and that will be totally fine for doing a bit of early game farming training. So with that said, what level are we actually looking for? Well we can start making money with Herblore at level 32 once we can start farming Renars, but since the seeds are so expensive, really I am looking to plant Toad Flax at level 38. They both make regardless pretty similar amounts of money, roughly around 20k per herb patch, which is incredibly good for my level and considering how I make my money right now. If we could get like 3 herb patches even and do 3 herb runs a day, that's an extra 250k profit with very minimal work. So the earlier I get these set up, the better. So for each tree run we have to wait around 4 or 5 hours. These are the lowest level trees but they'll still get us like 3 or 4 levels from a single tree run so I don't think this is going to be too bad. Probably only a couple days until we can get started with herb farming. Now in the last episode I got quite a few comments regarding my list of items I'm collecting, particularly those that are now worth less than a mil. 
Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, the list of items is completely fixed. Now, I've done that because if we tried to keep an active tally of exactly the items that were worth more than a mil on any given day, things would fluctuate so much and I think it would just be too confusing to keep track of. So I opted to just go with a fixed list. Now, the issue with this is some items have fallen well below the 1 mil mark ever since I started the account back in April. If you look at the bottom of the list, it looks like there's actually around a dozen items that are worth less than a mil and some substantially so, like the tyrannical ring is only worth 200k right now. Now I would like to try to fix this if I can and this is the solution I've come up with. Currently there are around a dozen items worth less than a mil that I haven't purchased yet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to purge the bottom of the list and replace them with some of the newly added items. My rare items list was created before the Phantom Muspa, before the Wildy Boss rework, so there's actually a number of really expensive items that are not on the list currently. So let's do a bit of a swap out. So we're going to go ahead and remove the 14 cheapest items that I haven't purchased yet and replace them with the Void Waker, the Void Waker's Hilt, the Void Waker Blade, the Saturated Heart, the Web Weaver Bow, the Void Waker Gem, the Ursine Chain Maze, the Venator Bow, the Venator Shard, the Claws of Callisto, the Fangs of Venonatus, the Armadillion Plate, the Accursed Scepter, and the Skull of Vedion. These are 14 incredibly expensive items that didn't exist when I made the account, but I think they're more deserving to be on the list anyway, but our total items to collect have not changed. We're still going for 334 items like the beginning, but now we just have some more expensive items to go for and less fluff. Now we've been killing a lot of moss giants just for training and our Briafita kill count is now up to 11. I mean we're now about one tenth of the way to the drop rate so we're getting there. Okay so something really interesting happened. I never expected the limestone to ever be worth anything but thanks to the release of the forestry blog they actually mentioned that limestone is going to be an item used in forestry so because of that it's shot up by a ton. Right now it's actually going for 1200 each, which is crazy. We're definitely dropping everything right now to go mine some limestone. Who'd have thought that would ever come in handy? I mean, I just can't believe I have access to one of the only chunks to get that in. Oh, let's go do some mining. So it actually is selling for over a thousand each. So we're just quickly trying to dump whatever we have into the Grand Exchange. We sold 25 of them for 1200 each, which is insane. We're going to dump another 140 in for a thousand each, see if that'll work, and we'll just go mine some more while we're waiting. Hey, there we go, there's 55 mining, just from mining limestone, I don't know, has anyone ever trained on this before? Okay, so a quick detour here, we finally have reached 27 farming, which means we're now able to get a boost to plant the willow sapling. So we'll boost the 30, plant the sapling, and we'll have to plant maybe 10 saplings more or so. Then we can get started with herb runs. Limestone is actually selling so quickly now. We sold 400 of it for 700 each. Bring our cash stack up to 700k just from limestone, which is kind of crazy. I would say right now mining limestone is like 500k per hour. Not something I expected to say in 2023. So we mined another hour's worth of limestone and we can still, looks like we can insta sell it for 700 which is 450k insta sold. Oh, you love to see it. We're going to cash stack up to 1.3 mil. So with that money and thanks to the Abyssal Whip crashing so much, we're actually able to buy one of RuneScape's most iconic items, something that is going to be incredibly useful once we get our attack up a few more levels. The Abyssal Whip has been obtained, which means we're also able to unlock another chunk. Now, I've been trying to decide on what chunk I want to unlock next, and I've decided to unlock the herb patch in Ardoin. It's not going in a direction I particularly need, but it's only one chunk to unlock a herb patch, which will I think by far pay for itself over time. Ideally, I want to unlock all of the herb patches if I can, but for now that one is by far the closest. Ooh, it's an exciting day for Trader Steve because finally we have reached 32 farming. Which means we can now plant Renar weeds and we have two herb patches to take advantage of. We're ready to go for our first herb run ever. 
Uh, we're able to afford six Renar seeds, and if one die, I'm gonna be so sad. Now, initially, I didn't actually think Herb Runs were gonna be viable because I don't have the Magic Secateurs, but after doing some calculations and assuming the wiki is correct, the Magic Secateurs don't make that big a difference. By far, the most important thing to have for Herb Runs is Ultra Compost. Ultra Compost makes a significant difference and can be purchased right from the Grand Exchange. The Magic Secateurs make like a 5% difference, which sure is nice, but is by no means necessary and, and definitely should not stop us from getting started with our Herb Runs. So there we go, one patch planted in Draenor, one planted in Ardoin. Now we just have to wait an hour and a half and we can get our first bit of profit. Okay, thank God. They didn't die, we're fine. So first Herb patch we get seven Herbs, not bad. So just from like three minutes of running, we invested 45k and we're getting 79k back. Just as easy as that. So the future for Trader Steve is looking good. We have our new region unlocked, we got a new goal, and we have a passive moneymaker to help start funding it. The next time you see me, I'm going to be swimming in Renar Weeds. See you next time. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Aleandra, Mitch Reinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. I do really appreciate it. Also thank you to Kapersky, YoYoSub89, and NDM0001 for being subscribed at the Runite Tier. Thanks everyone again, and I'll see you next time.